Hello snowboarders of the internet, I am TC and today we'll be reviewing the Jones Stormwolf. This board features Jones's surf camber profile with a 3D contour base, meaning that you have a spoon on the nose with a rocker in the nose as well, going over to camber in between your feet with a tiny bit of rocker on the tail. That allows you to float in the powder and get in and out of turns easier with that rocker on the nose and that 3D contoured base. This board comes in a 150, a 154, a 158, and a 162. I rode this board at Copper Mountain where it was a bit of a chillier sunny day where we had about six to eight inches of fresh snow and just some freshly groomed runs. I also used my Jones Mercury bindings and ride fuse boots. This board is in the middle of the road when it comes to stiffness. That being said, the tail is definitely gonna be a little bit stiffer for driving off of and really using that power where your nose is gonna be a little bit softer because you do have more rocker in it, which allows you to butter on and play with. That being said, stability wise, it is fairly stable. I would say this thing kind of rides like an arrow where it will just go straight and cut through a lot of that chunder and uneven snow. This board isn't the best for ollieing, I'll say. You do have a nice camber section to help things, but that short tail does hinder it a little bit. I found it was actually best to kind of take it off drops as opposed to like trying to go off of the jump line with it, where that stiffer tail does provide some landing gear when you are hitting drops. You could still pop an ollie on it, but you're not gonna go over a small house or anything like that. This board is very fun to butter on the nose, I'll say. On the tail, not as much. When you're in a fresh pow field and you go to throw 180 butter, you have a huge surface area that'll grab it, allow you to press and still hold it, but then pop you out. When it comes to the tail, however, it's more of just to press it, don't try to ollie and 180 into it. It's just not gonna hold up quite as well for you. When it comes to carving, this board really excels in the powder. It is very fast edge to edge and those long drown out turns, it does hold its speed well. And same with those medium sized turns. Now, when you get it to the groomers, it's not as fast edge to edge as it is in the powder, just because of that spoon, nose and tail and powder helps a little bit more. When you're on the groomers, it in those medium and longer carves, it still holds its edge extremely well where it does cut through all those uneven surfaces and terrain. This board is for somebody with a quiver where they're gonna take this out on those nice deep days from anywhere from that super steep shoot terrain all the way to those mellow trees where you're just trying to wiggle to find a good line. Personally, I thought this board was really fun in the powder and in those tight trees where you can really just wiggle around or point it straight and just ride it like an arrow. I really had fun on it. It's not a daily driver in my opinion, but I know some of you out there are going to do it. The comparable boards would be a K2 Excavator, a Battalion Camel 2, and a Nitro Dinghy. The bindings I would put on this board would be a Jones Orion, a Battalion Blaster, and the Union Force. This has been my review of the Jones Stormwolf. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Do you own? Are you gonna buy one? Leave a comment down below. I wanna know what you guys have to say. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe, click that bell, turn on those notifications. If you wanna support us further, head on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP, become a member. I could explain it here, but we have a great video over there that explains it much further in depth. And as always guys, I'm TC. We'll see you in the next video.